like labels were hitting me i had to turn down a world star deal like no cap oh three greedo like i don't know if you guys you guys are familiar yeah. he's one of my favorite artists and i guess unknowingly not knowing like that ai is such a new concept he basically fell for it and like he hit me up he hops on the pink floyd remix which is coming out soon and uh i got a break to the guy like yo bro like it was ai and like <laughs> Loved it. What up, what up, what up? I'm Brand Man Sean. And I'm Corey. And we are back with another episode of No Labels Necessary Podcast. You can catch us every Tuesday, every Thursday on Apple Music, Spotify, YouTube, wherever you stream your podcast here at the intersection of creativity and currency. Yes, we are about that no labels, no rules lifestyle. And we are here trying to help other people see different ways to get it done in the music industry, entrepreneurship, the content creator economy. And today we got some episodes for y'all asses, some topics. I mean, we talking about a big time music executive said you don't necessarily need to own your masters and a pretty popular artist said, yeah, I agree. I don't care about my masters. And on top of that. We're going to tell y'all what falling off really looks like. If you ever wonder what falling off truly means, we found we found the gold. We found the real definition of what falling off means. <laughs> but before that, JD's birthday, this artist had an amazing promo campaign that he did. It was a very unique idea and he flipped it. And it's the type of concept that any indie artist can flip for themselves if they use the method and way of thinking that he did. We did a quick interview with him he was he blessed us with his time his perspective and told us the behind the scenes of actually how he went viral and really took his streams up to like seven thousand plus per, um, new streams per day check out this talk with jay's birthday i think you're gonna love it all right everybody for this first segment today we got somebody very special uh, we actually talked about him on the podcast Probably a week or so ago, he he had one of the dopest like marketing campaign ideas and it brought him a lot of attention. So he wanted to get behind the mind of the campaign. Today, we got JD's birthday on the podcast. What's up, JD? What's the deal, y'all? Appreciate y'all having me. Yeah, no problem, man. Hey, well, like for those who don't who don't know and recognize the name, JD actually used Ice Spice to flip into a brand campaign for him where people actually thought Ice Spice was giving him a shout out. He used AI. I know y'all seen a lot of these AI campaigns. And if you missed it again, he he basically made it seem like Ice Spice was shouting him out, gave him some love. He got hella followers. We'll play that clip right at the end or maybe even before um, this when we put it up on the pod. But like, JD, what even gave you like this idea? Okay, so essentially like any other artist i just needed a way to promote my music and yeah. i like didn't i was like tiktok 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 and that was doing well but it wasn't translating to instagram and i'm like man i need to hit both of them at the same time mm. i realized how important instagram rap pages are any page that like will sell you promo for like bro 40 to 60 bucks like it's worth it if you have the right song and you have the right promo idea so I started working a shout out with my shout out to my boy Milky Underground for real. Like he paired me with Ice Spice for like hella of the promos. Like he would be like Ice Spice is X or like something like that. And that like kind of started the run in a way, because when I saw AI pick up, I was like, yo, this is like a gold mine. This is like crypto part two. Like you could fit like there has to be a way to get rich off this. You feel me? But like <laughs> I was like, man, so I, was, I just put two and two together. I was like. We're running the Ice Spice JD promo. I was like, what if we got her to say something? And that's when like it clicked in my head. I just typed in on TikTok uh, how to do AI. And then I went on the first website, downloaded Ice Spice's voice, spinned it to have her say what I want her to say. And then I just like put it in promo form, like put a little caption above it, uh, mm -hmm. gave them direction of how I wanted them to post it. Yo, tag me in this slide, da da da. But gave them the breakdown sent the money, boom. I seen it do successful on one. I was like, oh yeah, I got to run it on all of them. So like, I started like looking for more pages with good engagement, you know, not too high of a price because I'm an independent artist. Like I have no backing, no manager, no team label, nothing. It's me in my room. So I'm just yeah. like out, out of pocket, like giving them what I can. And yeah, it worked, it clicked. And that was like one of my marketing strategies. I had something I was doing with TikTok and that was kind of picking up steam, but like I said, it wasn't translating. So 
when those two clicked, it was boom. Like it started going up. I went up probably four, like I doubled my following basically because I was at like 4,500 and then like almost 8,000. So damn near doubled it. And like, which was crazy because I had not seen that like much engagement for something to do with music. So when I saw that, I was like, oh yeah, this is like, definitely AI is like a very good marketing tool. When yeah. you say you doubled it at 4K in what period of time, just to be clear? In like three to four days. In less than a week, it was done. Like it was like, boom, it had like the damage was done. And the song, the streams, like it's right now, it's getting between five to 7,000 a day, mm-hmm. uh, it's sitting at like 500K. And this is like all within a two month time period from when I dropped it to now, like two and a half months. So, yeah, just seeing that work, seeing that happen, it was like, it, sh- it goes to show. Yeah. And I know you, you said too before y'all kind of got to the AI voice. Uh, you was already running kind of an Ice Spice related campaign. So what did that look like before you transitioned into the AI voice stuff? Okay, so the first time my boy Milky Underground, he was uh, always running promos for me. And he would do like he would just do stuff where he pairs like a famous person with an underground rapper and kind of like tries to like leverage, you know, but in a fun, creative way, like not on some like super car chasing shit, just, you know, try to make it like funny and creative. And mm-hmm. He did that and he would do like, he, I remember the first time he did it, it was like Ice Spice's ex makes a song about her. And it was like for a song I did called Ice Spice. And yeah. <laughs> that shit like, that shit hit the Explorer page for sure. Like it hit the Explorer page. It was the first time I had had some, cause I never had one of my own posts hit the Explorer page yet. But as far as like doing a promo with somebody, that's the first time it was like over a thousand likes. My story views were jumping. I'm like, okay, there's something here. Like I just have to take what works and run with it at the end of the day. Like I saw there was something there. I saw the AI put two and two together and yeah, it was just otherworldly. The way that it shifted things, like I had, bruh, like labels were hitting me world star. I had to turn down a world star deal. Like no cap. Like they gave me, they were like trying to get it so that we could like do pink Floyd and the AI stuff on their page. But I was like, it just wasn't like the right situation for me. Um, but th- th- just, I'm just saying that to say that big people were hitting me up like Oh three Greedo. Like, I don't know if you guys, you guys are familiar. Yeah. He's one of my favorite artists and he was released from prison earlier this year. And um, I guess unknowingly not knowing like that AI is such a new concept. He, he basically fell for it. And like, he hit me <laughs> up and he like, he hit me up. Uh, he hops on the Pink Floyd remix, which is coming out soon. And uh he like hop, just basically endorses me like, yo, this is dope. Da, da, da. Brings me to the studio. I got to break to the guy like, yo, bro, like I got to tell you something like it was AI. And like <laughs> he loved it. Like he loved it. He was like, damn, that's crazy. Like you were able to do that, leverage the situation. So like I'm going to label. I'm sorry. I'm in like the studio with a big artist, somebody I looked up to. And it's like I got here off of like AI. It felt creativity, bro. Not the AI creativity. The fact you even put it out there like that. That's beautiful, man. I think like just hearing that you ended, you by yourself, you did something like this. And then so people can see how easily you can get, I don't want to say in all the rooms, but like really get reached out to get seen by people just by approaching something creatively. Like people that stands out, like because people are looking for the creative minds. Everybody's doing the same thing. And you said something that made me realize what you did was even more genius. Cause I talked about on the podcast that it was great that you didn't just say like i don't know like hey jay's birthday is the best in the world or something like that when you had ice spice talk you, you mentioned it in a way where it was like ah there's this guy who's mentioned me it's kind of creepy but he's now convinced me right yeah. but i wasn't aware that you were already like running some promo with her name anyway so it almost really was like yo this guy is truly like talking about me a lot even though i don't know him but now he's convinced me like the whole narrative and, and like was was set to be realistic the way everything was set up i love that yeah I, I appreciate it yeah i guess in a way i was like building off a story that probably like a larger audience wasn't familiar with but in my head yeah. i was like i was just gonna do it on milky's page like but when i seen it work there i was like yeah this is like this could be a page wide like on all the pages yeah ha- has i spy seen it like has she reached out Nah, no, uh, <laughs> nah, I would love for her to 
No, she's dope. I fuck with I fuck with Ice Spice heavy. Like a lot of people, they'll be like saying some crazy shit in the comments. Like honestly, bro, some of the comments are ridiculous. But I feel like it really conditions you, like to to like feel how it feels. Like this is what it feels like when stuff starts popping. People are opinionated, and like it just conditions you kind of to realize, yo, whatever I do, no matter how I do it, if it's creative and outside the box, people are gonna have something to say. Uh, mm -hmm. But as far as like people be like, oh, this is not a good look for like bigger artists. Like, oh, if I Spice sees this or if da 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 sees this, I'm like, man, and it always be like the people with nothing going on. It's like, y'all don't know what uh, bigger people are thinking. Like, they're like looking at somebody doing something creative. They're like, damn, I would have done the same thing in his position. Like, Bro, I'm so glad you said that. Cause it's funny. I, <laughs> this is actually last episode. So I made like a mistake talking about these guys campaign or whatever. And they like ripped my words up and paired it together, like showing how I was wrong. And I was like, I did the exact same thing if I was in their position, right? Like try to take a bigger figure and then like flip it to, to get the clout. So that's, it definitely shows the people in this space, you know, yeah, you're going to have some people who are salty, but yeah, a lot of them are like, no, nah, I get what's going on. You know, there might be certain lines to cross, but a lot of times people get what's, what's happening. So yeah, I'm glad you hey, understand that. Yeah, bro, the salty artist today is the collaborator tomorrow. You know what I'm saying? That's how I look at it. <laughs> if Nas and Jay-Z can make up off, off of real shit, you know what I mean? Like a post like that? Come on. <laughs> yeah, man. Yeah, man. And I, and I know you said you, you mentioned, you know, this is kind of your first campaign of this type. So, like, what what do you feel like you you learned from this situation that you're going to kind of carry forward with you? Like, do you feel like you you started to put some things together that you can replicate and uh, are building a system for? Or are you just kind of still winging it on that side? Right. I would say as far as going forward, you take bits and pieces of what worked before. So in the past, I've used like I don't know. You guys know this like a uh, weed YouTuber called Fulcrum. He like went viral this year, like the faded than a hoe, faded than a hoe, faded than a hoe guy. Anyway, yeah, he's, a pop, he's a popping figure on YouTube. And last year I like sampled his voice to make a beat. Like we done, we done been like, we've been doing stuff like that where it's like, we'll take like a, a popping figure at the time going viral, like a make a beat out of Andrew Tate or like make a beat out of da da da. Like, me and my friend group, like, we've been on that for, like, a while. So it's, like, we've been knowing how to, like, flip, like, some commotion going on in the media into, like, traction for what we're trying to do. Um, and I feel like, to answer your question of what I'm going to take with me, I feel like it's really the same thing that I've been carrying with me. Like, be observant. Be, like, plugged in. Like, I was, like, listening to Rick Rubin talk, and he was saying there's two type of artists. Like, one that disconnect, goes into the woods and, like, meditates and, like, I don't want like, and then makes music. And then there's an artist that like you're plugged in, like, and to be a mark, I feel like to be a marketer slash artist, which you have to do, if you don't have a team, you've got to be plugged in, like TikTok scrolling, like look for the next ideas. There's going to be a lot of crap to like sift through, but at the end of the day, you're going to be able to pull something. Cause why reinvent the wheel? People yeah. have viral videos, like watch the viral videos and apply it to your situation. And AI, for AI, it was the same thing. I just saw AI and I applied it to my situation and it probably won't be the last time I do that. So it's like in the future, I'll probably find different ways. Like, cause it's so new and there's like so many different things you could like fake, I guess you would, for lack of better words, it is what it is. And yeah, like, I just feel like you just have to stay observant and if something works, replicate it. And people are going to be like, you're going to have people that try to detract you. Like, oh man, like you got lucky, bro. Like da, da, da. it's like, nah, bro. This is like literally, this is literally creativity reincarnating itself time and time again. Like that never goes away. Like there's endless opportunities. So if you did something once, you could, you could leverage off that to do something again. Yeah. yeah so, so it sounds like the strategy is pay attention to kind of your cultural sphere and then when you see a big cultural moment pop off, you try to figure out if there's a way you can incorporate into your music. And I'm assuming if you see traction, you you keep it going. If you don't, you just kind of keep it pushing, look for the next cultural moment. Is that that pretty much correct? Yeah, that's somewhat the sauce. I would say also what I realized with the AI stuff or just like what the AI stuff opened my mind to is that you can create events. And I think people don't understand that large artists, like big major label artists, they do that all the time. How do you think people like keep their name in the headlines? Like 
blue face in the headlines all the time. You think all that commotion, it could be going on in his day to day, but I feel like a lot of stuff is fabricated or enlarged, you know, uh, to be like larger than life. And I feel like you can do that. You could either like, you can like create a situation or you could build off what's going on in your life. You don't have to wait for like a major cultural moment, but it can help. It could always help. I mean, it's not like, it's not something you should pass up on. So just like stay alert, but also you could create something. You can make a situation. Like I, I like did an AI, like I faked a news clip. You feel me? Like I created like a situation where it's like, now it's like, I could promo, oh, da da da, JD going to jail or JD uh, got arrested or da 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 on some like, you know, on some, not on something benign, like not like some crazy allegations, but just little things. Like you could fake moments in time. And that's not like the only way to do things, but it definitely is a route that I feel like a lot of artists use all the time. Yeah, just definitely. to stay in the conversation. Yeah, for sure. Well, well yo, you said you're doing like 7k streams a day on that song right now yeah. what were the streams before you did this ice vice post probably half probably half like the tiktok stuff was doing cool i was hitting like viral videos and it was getting people to listen to the song and that landed it in playlists you know how like the dsps work like if if you get hella push on a song right as it drops is going to be on like release radar and this and that. So like that really gave it a push. And then when I added the Instagram stuff, the Ice Spice AI stuff, that's what like basically doubled the numbers. So, so what exactly were you doing on TikTok? I just like, I'll just take viral videos and repost them like with the song. I mean, dude, I feel like I was doing stuff that was like hella like the stuff that like when I thought about it, it was like, how, how have I not been doing this? And then, it doesn't like I feel like people are gonna see this and be like, oh, I must like, yeah, you can start doing it, but you just gotta make sure you got the right song. And like, even if a song is good, it just might not be the right song. Like, I've had like plenty of songs that I feel are better than Pink Floyd, but it was Pink Floyd. And I feel like you'll know when it's the right song because you wanna like what you wanna do is test the waters, like have your main Instagram account, like whatever song, like post for like a month, and then at the end of like post a bunch of songs, different songs every day. At the end of the month, see what song got the most reaction to it. Like, it's going to be right in front of you. Like, okay, people like this one, but not that one. All right, let me try to run with this one. And it's all you. It's all what you want to do. But I just think that that really helps is putting a song out there, putting a few songs out there, seeing which one is doing the best out of the bunch, and then really running forward with that one, doing everything you can, putting all your resources into it. Yo, man, I respect your marketing mind because there's a lot of artists that like they they're they like the ideas the sound of them but you actually have the patience to go through the process like oh post a whole bunch of songs for a month and then look back at the data a lot of people don't go through that they're just like ah oh, this is not working right now oh I'm just, this isn't working right now and then they don't even think to go back and look at everything so like setting that threshold in the beginning and, and hear you even say, hey, I was, then I was testing a, um, a campaign with my homeboy and that started to work. And then I said, oh, I need to put this on other pages. So like, everything is that whole process, like combine things that are already working and then also test at the same time. Like That's what I, I boil it down to. And that is really a lot of the process when it comes to marketing. There's some other cool things you can do as things grow. But like at the base, that's that's it, you know, and when you're at ground zero. So I love to see that, man. Um, like, where did JD's birthday come from? Where's that name from? The name JD's birthday? Uh, let me see. It really comes because, like, the weekend. And I was, like, me and my friends were talking, like, man, what's that like? He just, like, birthday came into the equation based off the weekend. Like, we were listening to the weekend, and it was, like, my friend told me. Uh, he's not my friend no more, but he told me back then. He was, like, uh, you should call yourself JD. Because my name was already JD. It was YSL JD on some, like, young shit i was like young i was like 18 <laughs> i i put it why i saw jd and my like my friend uh he started going up more because like i've seen like a homeboy blow up so like i've seen what it's like for like okay the hard work behind the scenes like trying testing stuff that's what like really gave me the motivation but anyway like he gave me like the name jd's birthday and it really comes from the weekend but now to me it means a whole different thing it's like getting cake living every day like it's your birthday really 
just operating on those principles where it's like get money and make sure to enjoy your life because it's short. That's what like a that's just what it means to me. It can mean something else to somebody else, but that's the official term. Dope. Dope. Well, hey, my last thing to do something like what you did with the AI and the way you did it. It has there's there's certain brands that that works for and certain brands that that, that doesn't. Right. And not that you can't use those same tools, but you would have to do it in a different way. So with that being said, how do you see the brand and voice that you want to develop with your fan base and people who know you? Well, it's like for me, I just need to get the platform. I don't know anybody in the industry. Um, I don't really got any backing like that. I don't got anybody riding for me in this shit. So it's like for me, I got to do what I got to do to get myself in front of people. And as far as like what I want my message to be, or like, sorry, can you re- rephrase that question for me one more time? So think about it like this, like the personality, like, like is it more playful? You know what I mean? Like spamming, scamming, or is it like you know, like there's different ways that when we think about different artists, like how they are, like what what's that that you're aiming for personally? Man, I I think I'm just like. I don't know. I don't like the two cool artists, like the two cool artists, like where it's like they don't like to. They just want to be like chill all the time and relax. And like, I mean, I guess it works for some people like you got the Cardis and stuff that it works for. But like for me personally. I'm just going to be myself, like whatever that entails, like on one day, I might want to be like more reclusive and I might go like ghost for like a week. But then I come back and I'm like, I got stuff to talk about and I got music to show. So it's like, I guess it's really a balance. To me, it's keeping a balance of like, because like, look, I've seen like people go up, I'm doing some goofy shit, like, and I had to draw a line for myself. I was like, yeah, I'm not doing that shit. Like, uh, there's just some stuff it was like, I'm not doing. And I think I just drew my line where it's like, okay, like, so basically there's like artists like Summers and Autumn, like in the underground and stuff, like they faked like mug shots and arrests and all this stuff like on the come up and like the fans notice, but they don't care. And it's like, to me, it's like, I'm just trying to get my fan base. I'm just trying to get my voice heard. Like, I just want them to hear my music and like, take me for how I am, whether if I'm going to be like one day more silly and goofy or one day I'm going to be like more serious. Like, but I get, I get how you're saying what some brands it doesn't work for, but like, I don't know. I, to me, I never looked at it. Like I never looked too deep into it. I was just like, yeah, I'm going to just do this. And then they're going to hear my music. And then I got eyes on me. They gonna hear my next song and my next song, and then I could build a relationship, group chats, Discord, stuff like that. I love it, bro. You're not overthinking, and I mean, and in in a way, you build that brand over time. Just because if you're doing it, and your fans know you're doing this type of stuff, that kind of becomes the brand. Like they actually appreciate the creativity and you taking these like shots, like just shooting your shot. Yeah, you know, it comes out like almost an inside joke. Yeah, exactly. So, like that, you know, and the rest of the music community really isn't yeah yeah i can see something like that developing where it's like they're expecting me to come up come out with every song with some creative marketing type way exactly 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 those are the people people pay attention to because they know like oh if he does something it's going to have some thought into it it's not going to be regular and that's how you get people like trained to actually pay attention like kendrick does and people like j cole do I like, like, contrary to popular opinion, like, I'm a big fan of, like, 2017, like, 6 9 and I, like, love, like, how he garnered attention, bro, like, there's something about it, like, he was, like, holding 18 million viewers on live at one point, like, he was sending big records, and, like, as far as, like, from a marketing standpoint, I, re- I could really, really get behind, like, that type of thing, and, like, I'm not gonna go as far as to say it directly inspired what I'm doing now, but I go back, and I look at stuff like that, like, all right, like, he really, Cause what he did with academics is what I feel like I'm doing now with these pages. Like, yeah, he had it locked in with Ack and like they was going uh, back and forth on some viral shit constantly making sure both their names are hot. And like, that's how I like to build relationships with these pages because really y'all just going to make each other more and more. Yeah. And I think you touched on a, a really good point too earlier. And this is something that me and Sean was talking, literally just talking about maybe like three, four days ago. Right. And that's, Hey, I don't have to try to jump straight for the DJ academics or the our generation music or the raps, right? The pages that I'm pretty sure you've seen cost a couple hundred, a couple thousand dollars, right? 
if I can find a small page, $20, $40, $60 that has at least a tenth of the impact, but it's still within the same world, I have the potential to hit these same pages and not not spend anything. You know what I'm saying? So, and like, we've seen a lot of viral moments like that happen on our side, but I think where a lot of artists tend to get caught up is you hit a ceiling, you're like, okay, I have access to the, our generations of raps and the DJ academics. I'm just going to stay in this pocket versus like what you're probably seeing is like, hey, there's these new (laughs) pages that haven't really reached that point yet, but I have faith that they'll grow they're willing to work with me. Hey, let me just build this relationship and make it take advantage of what I have access to right now. And it's still in the same world. So I'm good pretty much. You know what I'm saying? I think that's a very important point that like everybody's watching is like, needs to kind of take away. Cause like me and Sean just had this same conversation. I'm like, yo, we keep going for the big pages. We need to culturally reset and go back down the scale. You know what I'm saying? Because these smaller pages are kind of impacting the conversation a lot more. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. I paid the big pages, man. I paid them like I seen what it does. And it, it's not much more than what the smaller pages are doing. Like if it's going to hit the, if the post is good and it's going to hit the Explorer page, it don't matter what page you post it on. That's the thing. Like, yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. You're right. That's the beauty of the, of great content and where the algorithm is right now. Mm-hmm. That's where we are. Well, hey man, appreciate you stopping by. And, um, you know, having this convo, I think there's a lot of game in what you said. And I, it's really encouraging to hear someone in your position, right, who hasn't really blown up yet, be so thoughtful. And, you know, like, I thought it was cool what you did, just seeing it, right? But then talking to you and knowing that there's, like, real thought and, 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 um, and intention behind what you do, I don't have any doubt that at some point you're going you're gonna to do something else worth talking about for sure. Yeah. <laughs> And I really appreciate you guys. Like, it's cool to be on here for real. Hey, no problem, man. No problem, man. Y'all make sure y'all follow him at JD's birthday. Go, go hit him up. Check his music out. Other than that, man, appreciate you stopping by. We're going to get to the next segment. Quick second. Have you ever seen an artist catch some traction and then they start to move? The numbers start to grow. They might even go viral. But then fast forward a year from now. Somehow their numbers haven't really grown that much. They dropped back close to the same monthly listeners they had before the traction and viral moment. Well, that's because you have to know how to convert those moments into careers. And we've done this again and again with not only songs, but artists. And so has J.R. McKee, who's been a part of helping artists like Lil Durk, Rod Wave, Justine Sky, and Money Long. And we just did a collab where J.R. McKee does a step-by-step breakdown of how he took Money Long from zero to millions of monthly listeners and winning a Grammy over Beyonce, Mary J. Blige, and Jasmine Sullivan. Check out this breakdown while we still have it up. You can check it out at www.brandmannetwork.com slash Grammy. Don't forget the www or it won't work. Again, that's www.brandmannetwork.com slash Grammy. Back to the video. All right. So hopefully y'all enjoyed that interview with JD's birthday. Shout out to him. Y'all show him some support. Just another indie artist on the rise as many of y'all are. So show him some love. But now we got another topic because... There's a big time music exec that doesn't necessarily think that artists should own their masters. Check out this clip. Love Kevin Lyles. He's a very good friend of mine. But he said, if you want to own your masters, put up the money. Great. But his whole point was, I don't think artists should own their masters just to own their masters. What are you talking about? Why should you own it ever? Why? Because you gave them a loan? Their bank gives you a loan for your house. You own the house. You pay the payments. It's your house. It's their house if you don't make the payment. But it's your house when you make the payment. The labels give you a loan. But yet they turn that loan into ownership in perpetuity. Uh Get the out of here and they know it's wrong what you warn an artist about look at the length of the licensing agreement how many songs do you have to deliver look at what counts against your options so an artist will put out a product much quicker now they want the revenue of it but they don't want to count it against his options because he'll get out of the agreement quicker what difference does it make as long as you're making the money shut the up and let this man do his thing that he should receive the benefit of getting out that agreement based off of those terms mm. not based off you can put out five albums but only one per year counts you understand what i'm saying i don't want to say anything that's not crystal clear i want to make it uncomfortable i don't give i don't should, care okay, about these should, people so to make it clear this is steve style talking but his homie kevin Lyles is the one who said you shouldn't necessarily own your masters as an artist jacory do you agree <sighs> Such a such a such a slippery slope. Slippery slope. Such a slippery slope. So I, I I agree with the bigger point that he's making. Why I think that the 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 deal should be something that's being worked towards or what an artist does on it. I do agree with that, right? Like like the house example 
is an example that was used for me a couple of years ago and it, it does make a lot of sense like i mm-hmm. said like once you pay out the, the mortgage off you own the house right yep. versus in this you could complete all the requirements for the project and things like that and like you don't you don't you don't have any ownership of it so that i do agree with i do agree with who should own it i think still comes down to sweat equity and the level of investment mm-hmm. so like to the point he made earlier where he was like yo kevin i was looking at like yo if i put up all this capital and, and resources at xyz i should own it and i agree with it, you know what i'm saying like if, if it's out if if the resources that are needed to make the thing move are being overwhelmingly given from one side then that means that one side is overwhelming overwhelmingly taking all the risk right and i do think in that scenario that entity should maybe not necessarily own all of it Right, which could be a point that some people might make. Maybe not own of it, own all of it, but I think it does deserve like majority ownership of it. You know what I'm saying? Because yeah, it's easy for the the artist who hasn't put anything up to view it through a different lens, right? So hey, if I put in a half a million dollars in this flop, you just walk away. I just lost half half a million dollars, right? So because I'm incurring majority of the risk, this is my shit. You know what I'm saying? That's how I feel about it. So that's why I say I think it's a slippery. So I can I can understand both sides of the argument the creative and the business argument for it and those who kind of fall really deeply on one on one side but ultimately i do think the point he made you know what i'm saying about like that deal structure that you're paying back should at least count towards future ownership that i do agree with i think that should be the case yeah i i definitely see both sides of this where of course yeah the house example that was the first thing where i i clearly saw like yo beautiful this example wow yeah yeah that you don't own your shit after you pay it off or anything else that you pay off you know with a car yeah right? you pay it off and you own the thing i pay it off i pay it off the other person still owns the thing which is an amazing deal for the label like that's crazy yeah i front you some money and for you to go build my asset yeah. <laughs> this is my asset and yeah. you go and you go make it valuable right that's crazy when you think about it. But on the other side, the risk as a business, well, why the hell am I going to give you some money and not really participate much on the back end? Like, why am I going to give you money to then go own, I'm, like to then make me the money back and then I don't own it, uh, like earn anything? Mm-hmm. Like, I don't earn no interest on this thing, right? I don't get to really experience the upside of this thing and I have the expertise to actually make this thing valuable and, and, and tap into those resources, right? Mm-hmm. So I think that's where we get the ebb and flow. To na- now we, we are in a, rec- when a, now we are in a day where, yes, it makes a lot of sense for, uh, artists to say, I want ownership of this shit and I don't really need you label for anything. All right. And because of that, I'm going to own my masters. But on the flip side of that, it's, well, hey, artists, you don't need me for anything. I'm not going to provide you services like that. I'll front you the money and kind of be a bank. Mm-hmm. All right. In this agreement, no, it doesn't make any sense for a label to then like own some significant portion of the masters. But I am still in business for a profit. Like I'm not in business for you to make the money back and pay me back. Yeah. Like nigga, what am I? <laughs> yeah, exactly. I'm not trying to break even like every year. I got in, um, investors and board of directors to report to. I need to grow the business. So. Like thinking about both sides, I feel it from a label standpoint is just, again, well, how am I going to get my money? Because the conversation needs to then be like creatively, how can we make this work? Do I get more of a a bigger share of royalties or do I get a longer lifespan that I receive a return? Mm -hmm. Yes, you own the masters, right? Or maybe do I own profit sharing off of the masters for X period of time and I don't own your masters, right? And letting y'all know, y'all can get creative as y'all want to with these deals. Like it all it is about what the two people agree on. There are standard things, but then there's things that you can make shake for you and whatever your agreement like is. So I could say profit sharing versus ownership. I could say ownership and no profit share. I could say merch and no touring, or I could mm-hmm. say touring and no merch. Like all these things are up like for uh, you know, negotiation. Y'all tell me what makes sense from a label on a like on a on if the if the label doesn't own masters. Like, yeah. And I'm not saying there's nothing that doesn't. I'm just saying like I asked the question versus say it in this agreement because I know there's some artists out there who haven't thought about it from this side. We know we have plenty of executives and managers and people like that who listen and y'all already kind of got some answers and thoughts on, in mind. But for the artists who never thought about that, you need to because one. 
and some of this encouragement and empowerment, we're creating entitlement along with it. Mm -hmm. Right. Yes. We want you to own as much as you can own. We want you to build your business, not get taken advantage of. But on the other side, to really do that in the best of your abilities and still do good business or not miss out on good opportunities, you have to understand the business models of the people that you're trying to deal with or what um, what benefits do they really have? Mm-hmm. All right, you're like, oh, no, I don't want to give you this, this, and this. The person on the other side of the table might just be like, well, damn, bro, like, I mean, it's just not worth it for me. So how do I make it worth it for you based on the model at hand and and get into business with you with what I need um, in mind? Those are all things to, to to think about and i know artists um that sign record label deals completely own their masters mm-hmm. like yeah. and we're not talking about like this distribution deal which is different typically you don't have your masters up but there's so there's record labels especially on the indie side who are willing to negotiate shit like that i mean 21 savage wrote about it man so he owned all his masters all of his masters, 100% of his masters, or he has a significant portion of ownership on all his masters? No, no, I don't want to speak. He just said it in the song. You know? I'm, just, <laughs> I'm just going off with the lyrics. Like. You know, that's just out of curiosity. <laughs> I, don't, you know, I don't know anything at all. Like, so I'm not implying anything when I say that. But because, again, even that's the thing, right? You can have percentages of ownership on your masters. All of this stuff is literally, like I said, up for negotiation. You just get creative and we read these standard deals. But, like, the standard necessar- isn't necessarily something you should follow when it comes to doing a deal um, as an artist. It's something to be aware of. And then now, what's the value of this person on the other side? What are the things that I want to participate in? Like, Do I truly want to build, manage a business in this area or that area? All of it is something to think about. Like Some people are like, yo, all I need is a tour manager, right? I don't need a label. I don't need, no, I don't need an investor. I just need a tour manager, mm-hmm. right? And there's some people who I, I need to just go hard on this content thing or some people I need the label infrastructure or, I, or I, some people still even say they need radio, which is, you know, it makes sense for some people. So, you know, it's just something to think about. I agree with what Steve is saying today for sure. Like it's a like those deals don't make sense today. But I think when we look back at the old days when the labels were creating the value, not not saying the artist in their work wasn't valuable in terms of the quality and the talent at hand 1000 percent is is there right but hmm it's just like artwork right we know as artists and people who are really in this space the value of shit but when you're looking at artwork in a gallery a lot of that value the basquiat's and and warhols the actual value that people are willing to pay for it and or invest in it is based on the marketing of it all it's, yeah. it's based on how it got pushed into the marketplace and I, we we told the unknowing consumers that there's value here you get what i mean yeah yeah i mean i think it comes down to it comes down to to just the whole bubble we talk about you know the artists are in sometimes well i can understand how as an artist where you know you feel like around you there isn't music as good as yours you know how artists think yeah um you know yeah. you're getting praise for it you really just hear the fan feedback because we always go back to how much fans can change perception good or bad both you know what i'm saying front world facing internet shit and behind the scenes sometimes man you know, a lot of fans a lot of artists have taken to heart for better or worse things that fans have said and, and ran and, and, and directions with it, right? So I can understand, bro. You're getting thousands of people telling you, like, your music is fine. You understand. And you think that's why shit is going. But then to your point about understanding the value of the person on the other side of the table, that's why I think it all comes down to Because if you're like, hey, like I don't need this fire-ass marketer and this publicist and this radio guy to go, I have my own situation, then you're right. It doesn't make sense for you to be giving up masters, right? Because to mm-hmm. your point, is like, it's going to be more work for you, but you could go put together a situation that gives you the same opportunity with a lot less have been given up. Mm-hmm. But if you are, do not have those things or you understand the value of those things, but you know you can't get, get it on your own, then you, you can make an argument for the other side, right? Like I've heard lots of interviews from artists that said things like, Yo, I gave up the masters around my first two projects just to get into the building, right? To be able to work. But I knew that I had at least 10 more years of career left. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. it, it was a flip I was willing to make. Like I've, I've heard stories like that, you know, that have, that have gone either way. So and it worked out. And it worked out. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. You know, like I've 
I think it, I think there are a lot more success stories in that than get talked about publicly. You know, mm. um, there are a lot yeah. more people I know that I've met behind the scenes that will say that, but not too many that will say that like up front. You know, See, um, but that comes from having a plan, right? Yeah. Again, so one understanding the business model of the people that you're trying to go in business with, and then building this expectations and plans around that. So you can have a long term strategy yeah. it, instead of just getting surprised. Oh, shoot, man. I didn't realize I didn't own my master's or I didn't realize all the value that could come from a master's. And now you just feel like you're getting screwed over. Right. That's a complete different perspective than knowing like, oh, well, if I do this, this and this, I'm going to be good. And, and I might be missing out on this additional stream of income at the moment, but I'm going to get income from here, here, here. I'm going to be good regardless. But ultimately, I do know I want to retain ownership of my master's. So I'm going to put myself in a position to do a buyback, which is something that companies do all the time, by the yeah. way. Yeah. Right. Yeah. You issue stock and then you do buybacks of stock. So I think, of course, I'm all for artists having ownership, but I think that's the starter conversation. Right? And now that we've had that starter conversation again and again and again and again, I think we need to have a more complex business conversation and talk about deeper strategy because we're doing a disservice. Like many of these people who say all this, like you need to own, you need to own, you need to own and like ha have your masters, all that shit. Some of them are just using the propaganda to make themselves like look good and they don't actually move like that. You know what I mean? It's like, yeah, we know this, the marketing messaging that's working right now. So we're going to tell everybody <laughs> y'all need to, you know, own your masters. But are we really going to educate you to get yourself out of your position where you understand the game from a full scope of things? Like that's my, I mean, that's my gripe with some of these, you know, people in government. They act like, like you care about you. It's like, all right, bro, we need more than book bags. Give us, you know, <laughs> you know like give us the actual education. Yeah, the books. <laughs> give us some books. Give us the resources and the proper teaching support and all these other things. So now we can continuously economically support ourselves versus you having to buy us a fucking turkey every year. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's what I feel like they're doing with artists right now. It's like, we're going to give y'all a motherfucking turkey. We're going to give y'all a book bag and make it seem like some sauce. Yeah, only your masters or whatever. But beyond that, how do I truly think about this comprehensively as a business person? That's not out there. Now, all that being said, there's an artist out there. He don't really care about his at master's ownership. All right. At least not for some of his work you talk about. You know, you talked about that a little bit, Ja'Cory, how some uh, people had that strategy. But this situation, I say, is a little bit different, right? Because Bow Wow says owning your masters doesn't matter when you're a touring artist. Do you own your masters? No, nah, I don't look like for me. I don't really like people. I just had one of my partners ask me about that. Cause you see everybody selling their masters, yeah. everybody yeah. Mm -hmm. selling their masters and this, that, and the third. For me, it's like, I don't really give two fucks about it the masters really because for me number one coming up jd did majority of the writing anyway right you know what i'm saying okay. um so early on i really wasn't even writing shit. you know i didn't start really writing until probably like my second album because i had to learn how to write like a lot of cats can rap but they don't know how to formulate that into bars and this is the hook or you know people got their own little method so for me I kind of caught on late to it, you know what I'm saying? But it never, I really wasn't tripping because if you were a touring artist, I mean, although you're never going to want to leave that paper out there, eventually that's something you can sit on and they'll come to you later on in life. But for me, I'm a right now type of nigga. Like, I tour. All right. Some loaded statements. First of all, shout out to JD, bro. Jermaine Dupri is is so underappreciated, bro, because, you know, the South don't scream as loud as some of these other coasts, you know what I mean? We love y'all all, but the South don't be screaming in the same way. You know, we don't have the as you know the 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 tycoon uh, execs in the same way. But the shit that uh, Bow Wow said, one I understand a little bit. Yeah, I wasn't writing this thing. Yeah, I'm just a performing artist. That's basically what he said. Yeah. I'm performing this shit. Goes back to that knowing the value of the person on the other side of the table thing, right? Yeah. Like he's like this person giving me the hits. Fuck it. You know what I'm saying? Like, take what you want. You're giving me the hits, <laughs> right? So how can you be like, I actually appreciate that perspective of, like you said, knowing the value, not getting so ego driven. I should own all this just because I'm the one who performed it and they coming for me. Yeah. All right. So that part I can appreciate. And I hope y'all get that detail. The part that I didn't like at, was the end where you're just like, I want to right now type of nigga. Yeah. That's, that's the part that made it seem like, damn, nigga, you just short sighted. Yeah. It sounds <laughs> like, man, that's when it started to get rocky. Like, oh man, <laughs> sounds like he's been finessed and he doesn't know. It hasn't clicked yet. <laughs> oh man. Yeah, that part right there. Eh. Okay. Like, 
<laughs> be more than right now. But one, the money you can make and do well with from touring from touring is significant. Two, yes, if you actually monetize a celebrity brand, you it is a real thing that you can do. You have that attention. Mm-hmm. How do you monetize it? So there are other streams. So it's not like you have to be broke just because you don't own your music income. Yeah, you look right? at someone like Bow Wow, but he flipped into acting gigs and a all the other things. So he he's probably looking at it like, man, like yeah, I didn't make any money off music, but music was the catalyst for all this other shit that came from me. So I'm cool with it. I'm happy yeah. not getting my bag over there. Like I exactly, I, you guys think I should be. That's a real strategy. Again, yeah. talk about thinking about the different things. It's it's no different. It's a more invested and committed way to do it. But on a small scale, that's like having a song that you don't necessarily like connect with and then building your career after you get the attention from that song or even smaller scale having a video that's a little viral that's not necessarily your music but then using that attention and flipping it into yeah. the music career yeah. so like the strategy is a strategy there's so many examples of people doing one thing and then flipping it to a, a another thing no matter like what industry but yeah <sighs> i <laughs> Only the the not only your masters based off of the principles we said, not with the energy he said. I don't like that shit, bro. It was a little, it was a little bit too loose. It wasn't like, oh man, yeah, I don't I care remember, about masters, it. but I understand why. And in most in most people's cases, they probably should. Like, it was just like, yeah, bro, that's that child actor money, bro. Like, I said, how you thinking <laughs> different, man? How you moving in the world man, a little bit more loose? It's a different world where you come from, boy. And then Jeez. plus too, bro. Like, I'm just, I just believe that all the artists from that era are just like still in the matrix man they all just realized they were finessed for decades you know what i'm saying so the, I, I think we got to give them time all right the video went out for a second but we are back Corey had one more point he wanted to make about this bow wow situation and then we got some some pretty strong topics to throw at y'all in terms of the culture and how artists brands should be perceived yeah man so i was thinking about the part where bow wow was like you know i'm a touring act right i tour and you know we we all know that's not uh, the, uh, the touring isn't the saving grace that it used to be but i can understand his mentality right why do i care about the money i'm making from the recorded music when there are all these other things the recorded music has afforded me to make money off of and i thought about like what's the equivalent of that today for newer artists right what would make them feel like fuck this music shit i'm getting this bag right and to me it's the brand deals right why am i gonna why do i care if i made 15k off this music when this music helped me get a 100k sprite bag or helped me get a, yep. a, a half million dollar target bag or you know um i mean that interview will be out by the time this comes out but like the garage interview where he talked about flipping music into sinks and shit right so i was like hey if i i just need it out there and i know this label this entity is gonna give me the resources to create something around me big enough to get it out there that i can flip these other five or six different looks i could get where he's coming from you know i could i can understand the artist that views it that way him I still don't know. Like, it still sounds like he just he just got pulled out the matrix a little bit. He ain't really he ain't really realized it all the way yet that he back in <laughs> he back in real life. But the sentiment, right? That I don't care about music because I have touring. I flipped that today. Hey, I don't really care about music as much because I have content streams. I have brand deals. I can understand where he's coming from. Yeah, that's probably how like speed feels. You know what I'm saying? No, that's a fact. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You got those people in the, <laughs> in the bags, not even where anywhere near as close. Yeah, like, yeah, I'm gonna do this music. Y'all do what y'all want to. It is kind of like just marketing for everything else. Yeah, exactly. It's a lifestyle thing. I thought about it too because Speed and Costa Nat dropped this song together, and I was like, this is such a terrible song, <laughs> and it's doing such crazy numbers. And I was just was so confused. And I was like, well, you know, with their audience, like their audience thinks it's cool. They pay attention to rappers. Yeah, it's a bigger brand flip, man. I'm gonna take this terrible music video and go flip it into a, I don't know. A bang deal or something like that. You know, I get, I peep the game, bro. I be seeing the strategy, man. You know, niggas, every time these influencers hit a million views, it's a new brand deal getting announced like a week or two weeks later. You know, that's the flow. <laughs> <laughs> so I get it. I get it. Yeah. Yeah. Ah, oh, man. I feel like there's a deeper conversation that we need to have about like, how much money you can expect for real, for real to make from your music directly. I mean, we kind of had that before. Whereas, like, really, even if you own all of it and you're making the, um, you know, you're getting income from streaming and all that stuff, really, mm-hmm. the money money is still going to be from other stuff. Mm-hmm. Even if you own most of your masters. And a lot of these cases, from what I've been seeing from artists that are pretty successful, pretty independent, that I know, it's like, all right, yeah, this money from streaming is either just, like, to pay some bills 
All right. And at most it's to reinvest and to then still be able to make mm-hmm. money from everything else. So you're still breaking even. I don't really know anybody who's like killing it, killing it personally. That's like told me it like, yo, that streaming bag, right, is a crazy bag and like I'm good. Right. It's usually even if it's a crazy streaming bag, but the career is so big, it doesn't really maintain like that person's lifestyle Mm -hmm. and all the other things they need to do to continue to fund and grow that particular business around the artist itself. You Mm -hmm. know what I mean? So Mm -hmm. a meal per year might be great for an artist at ground zero. Like who is thinking like, oh yeah, a meal per year from stream. I can live off of a meal. But usually that artist who's making a meal per year from that is like, I want to do like other shit. Mm-hmm. In most cases, there might be one or two other artists where it's like, all right. I mean, shit, even those artists have bigger aspirations and they're just like, I'm going to make money from this music and let these streams run up and then I'm going to just go do some other shit and leave. Go start a cement business or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, it's, it's nobody that I know who's like, yeah, let's just main Tank, I, I'm doing 500k in streams every month, and I, I'm just gonna maintain this 500k in streams every month and successfully doing that. <laughs> and now I'm living in like a consistent life off of that, like or 500k a year even. Like that, I don't know. It, it might not be a thing. We try to promote it like yo, be indie, and I don't. I'm not saying don't be indie. I we we try to promote it as if it's easier. Or, than it is or you're making more money than you would think in these cases but really i feel like the what based on what i'm seeing so far you're only making the money to put into other things and reinvest in the business now that's off of streaming income your masters is different than the streaming income that's going to create all kind of other opportunities that you can't even see down the line mm-hmm. and back to kevin lyle's statement not owning it just to own it what i do think is a thing is you can own it and then not know how to monetize your masters yeah like we're because again we're not just talking about oh yeah because somebody streamed your shit like your the biggest opportunities especially if you get yourself in a certain position for your masters is not just gonna be like streaming some more songs you know what i mean yeah. <laughs> it's gonna be whatever that might look like whether that's sync or just new platforms and avenues like there's so many things that your masters can be uh, monetized from, which we need to do an episode because I n- I don't think I'm fully aware of every way uh, masters can be monetized or strategically how someone who owns a masters and really does that, yeah. with how they look at it. I feel like an episode is going to need some some detailed research. Nah, need some detail looking for somebody who can talk about it. <laughs> 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 Yeah, sound like a sound like a uh, PBS special, man. Right. Like, no. Hey, hey, y- y'all go ahead and donate five dollars so we can <laughs> pay somebody yeah, to create hit that super subscribe button, yeah, whatever it's called. Yeah, super chat yeah. button. Yeah, hit that hit that <laughs> that button. Go ahead and give us a little donation, and we'll we'll pay and create an entire mini doc on what you should do with your masters and hire hire the right people and everything. And when you should give them up, <laughs> let it go. And that's fine. <laughs> <laughs> But all right, let's get into this next topic. And the video no longer has sound, so we can't play the clip. But what this clip is, or what this content is, really, let's start with this subject. Can people fall off? And if so, what does it really mean to fall off? In the clip, DC Young Fly was a comedian, artist, dancer, all of those things. Extraordinary. Modern day renaissance. Man. Modern day renaissance man. He's the he's the hood Sammy Davis. And he's a hood. This is Sammy Davis Sammy Jr. Davis, you know yeah, mean? Sammy Davis Jr. He's the hood <laughs> Jamie Foxx. You know what I mean? Now, he basically says, "Hey, bro, this falling off shit is bullshit." Mm-hmm. You know, I have been in front of people's lives, been out here in the streets, like coming to the media, kind of blew up for like ten years now. Which is crazy. All right. Five more years from now, when I'm like, I think he would be like mid thirties or whatever. I don't want to be in front of y'all. All right. I got kids. I got a life. I'm trying to become the behind the scene businessman. Mm. And what he was alluding to is something that I agree with, which is, yo, man, a lot of this falling off shit is just perception. And a lot of this perception, of course, is based on what the media has going on. So if you just don't see me no more, I fell off. That's what most people are really just defining it by. But I realized early on, I would be watching TMZ, the show, 
and I'll be seeing like some old, like, I don't know, actor or something. And they'll be in some fancy store on Rodeo Drive and the actor, actors look like they doing good in life. And I was like, dang, bro. Like, and I'll ask my uh, dad or grandma about them. And I'm like, I haven't ever seen this person anything. They're like, oh, yeah, this person was big back in like 1980. Should be the man. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm like, well, dang, I ain't seen them in anything. I don't even look like they did anything in my lifetime in terms of acting and act, uh, like any kind of acting gigs and shit. But they still at this expensive ass store, you know what I mean? In this well to do environment. So how are you judging about falling off? Because if my lifestyle hasn't fell off, what do I really care about all this other shit? But Sean, you know it's not that simple, man. It's about what we as the people can see and put our fingers on. And 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 when's the last time I seen you at, at a Kylie Jenner birthday party, bro? You know what I'm saying? If none of those things have happened recently. Then then who cares that you're still financially stable and probably doing better than 99 percent of the rest of the population? Who cares that's, about that? <laughs> see, that's the damn shame, though. Like you just actually hit that shit on the head. The Kylie Jenner shit. You know what you just remind or made me realize? You can't. Like personally, you can't follow these niggas idea of your life falling off or not because they really don't know when you on. That's true. Yeah. Like that's, niggas that's will true. think, oh, yeah. he at Kylie Jenner yeah. birthday party or he at this event or he's standing next to that person. He on and you be broke as fuck. And then you disappear. They think you fell off and you be good. Yeah. So dictating your life by anything <laughs> based on what the public thinks, you probably going to be messed up anyway. Like, so how can we care about the perception of being a fall off when you really didn't know when I got on. Where in this line? You might have saw a lot of events and eventually somewhere in that event and the current um period of time, I did get on. But you don't know when it actually happened. And I was just finessing your ass until I finally got on. Making this shit look good. Hey, making yeah. that shit shake. That's why they need entertainers need to put their they, they taxes up, man. I believe that. So I can be like, damn, bro, he was only making... 60k a year when this movie was top of the charts you know what i'm saying so mm -hmm. i just i want to see that man i want to see that information line up like i think chris tucker said he got like 5k off of friday yeah you know what i'm saying hit movie well uh, that was a cold hit at first right cold hit but right. Right. again right. perception like if you're a super fan of friday like oh, early yeah. on in that yeah. era yeah you're just seeing this and it's big in your community you think this nigga on yeah all right even before it hits pop so well, that's a whole nother thing, like whether they should have been paid more or all that, because you know, may know that was going to like take off necessarily, right? But yeah, to you, you're like, oh, this person's on. You're making these assumptions, and with those assumptions that they're on, there's a certain amount of money that you like associate with that. This is crazy about art, bro. That's actually what is crazy about being an art, bro. The moment there are a lot of people that know about it, the people assume there's a lot of value there. It's just it's so funny to think about that. You know what I'm saying? It's like because yeah. like there could be a picture on the wall. And one person is looking at the picture and we're all like, oh, that picture's worth nothing. But if a, you walk by and a hundred people are staring at the picture, you'll assume the picture's worth a lot. You know what I'm saying? It's right. crazy. It's crazy how that works when you really <laughs> break that shit down. Because it's all just us feeding off each other. Like, yeah, he looking at this shit. Shit must be worth something. You know what I'm saying? Let me social let me see, proof. Let me see works, what's up right? with this. Like, even that was the point, like DC Young Flowers making right like that. Like, we view just falling off as like lack of mainstream attention. Right. But then to your point, like you said, like, what if I'm better off financially? What if I never cared about mainstream attention, right? Like there are artists who were, if we keep it music, who were shot to the top of that shit that like, you know, you could tell they didn't really care about that. You know, I think about someone like a Macklemore, right? Yeah. So, you know, can I say that Macklemore is no longer as popular as he was in, what was that, 2016, 2017? Yeah, 100%. Can I say that Macklemore has fallen off? No. Right. You know what I'm saying? Because last I checked, he still streams very well. You know what I'm saying? He's still making money. And, like, and there are lots of artists who come and go in that. And I think what's interesting is that this the- This is an underrated indie story. To Macklemore's indie yeah, story? we need to interview Macklemore or somebody. Mm. I mean- <laughs> You'll fuck with Macklemore? No, I mean, no. I ain't got nothing against I want to know the details, man. I'm not a huge fan of his music, but I want to understand. I want to hear the details. Yeah, I remember- yeah, I, I, you're right. The story would be interesting, man. Yeah, yeah the story would be interesting, That's man. Right. I mean, I'll be forgetting. People be watching this, man. I can't, you know, can't <laughs> be speaking like, like I be want to speak. <laughs> it's okay, bro. I get a, I get a random DM every like, damn, you watch this? It's crazy. If, if you don't fuck with your boy, bro, uh, you don't nah, fuck nah, with nah, him. You know nah, what I mean? I'm, I'm cool. You know, Michael Moore. You know, if you out there listening to this, man, like keep doing your thing. You know what I'm saying? Like, keep keep it going, man. You're an inspiration to somebody, not me, somebody. <laughs> But, but like, I think 
the perception of falling off doesn't hold as much weight as it used to, right? Because being saying somebody fell off in like the two thousands, something like that, yeah. was was detrimental because there was no way for us the public to verify. Now I can be like, damn, what happened to such and such? Oh, that dude fell off. What? Go look at his Instagram. I don't know, man. He just posted a picture 30 minutes ago and that shit got a million likes. Go to Spotify. I don't know, man. He still got 8 million monthly listens. Right? I can I can do all this research pretty quickly to like verify, like, man, somebody fucking with them, even if it's not me, right? Versus like back then, it was just kind of like, oh, what happened to such and such? Damn, I think I just fell off. Oh, damn. Go on about your day. You know what I'm saying? No way to really, really case it out and see if, see what happened to him or not. So I think that there are artists that we are getting to see enough artists who don't always live underneath the mainstream sun to show us that, hey, being under the mainstream light doesn't necessarily mean that I'm on, right? To your point, we've seen lots of celebrities and big artists in the limelight that have come out with, we learned just the, the craziest personal life shit was going on, right? They was down bad in certain ways and then vice versa, right? We've seen artists that was like, we'd be like, damn, I ain't seen you in years. And they pop back out. And they doing better than the last time that yeah. we saw them. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. damn, bro, you know, I don't drugs no more. You look clean, you know what I'm saying? Like, your house look nice from this Instagram live. You know, it's like a yeah. cool place that you're in. Like, and it's, and you're, in a, you're in a much better, more solid place. So I think, like, just that perception of falling off is going to have to change at some point. It, it can't, it can't, it's, it's not going to be the same insult it once was if we keep hanging on by the same standards. If people want, the you fell off insult to still hit. We got to change the metric of what falling off means. You know what I'm saying? We have to. Yeah. Because in most cases, it really means that niggas who didn't care about you in the first place aren't seeing you anymore. Yeah. It's like you got, you got your core fan base. You get that before you hit mainstream. Once yeah. you get to mainstream, that's when you start getting people's faces who don't really care about you, but they see you. So you become a brand that has that extra equity. Yeah. But you disappear from the mainstream. It's like, oh, yeah, I'm not checking for you anyway. I only kept you in mind because you were in front of me. Yeah, I have a choice. Yeah, I didn't have a choice. <laughs> you kept saturating my my damn purview. Now you only got your super fans and people who care about you in the first place, which is that's really what most of these artists are trying to get to. Yeah. Like, you know, they don't really care about. I don't know, the, the mainstream, I guess. You know what I mean? Especially today's mainstream. Yeah, and I was going to say, that usually the ones, or as you can say, like, actually truly fell off, right? The ones that kind of chased mainstream, but didn't have either the work ethic or the music or the brand to to stay there, mm -hmm. right? That's um, right. It's a personal thing. Yeah. Like, oh, don't, don't try to finesse it and act like you didn't care about this shit, <laughs> bro. No, you fell off by your personal goal standard. <laughs> you was the one saying you wanted Grammys and billboards and Top 10 hits hey. every other week. You know hey. what I'm saying? Yeah. So it, 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 it'll be that, right? Like they'll kind of fall off based on, like you said, their own goals. Or to your other point, they didn't do the work to build a core fan base on the web. Because I, don't get me wrong, I have truly seen some artists fall off. Don't get, don't, don't get me wrong. Anyway. Um, Slim Jesus. He never like fully got on for me. <laughs> so I don't, you know what I mean? I can't, I can't speak on All that. Right, hold, let me look up something real quick if I say the next one. <laughs> All right, why are you saying that? <laughs> I'll, I'll say that makes me think about uh, recently Giannis and um, the Milwaukee Bucks got booted out of the playoffs, right? Mm. Bruh was like, yo, like, because, oh, he got asked by the reporter, was this season a failure? And then he was like, what, why, why would you ask me that? You asked me the same shit last year. No, this season wasn't a failure. Yeah, the yeah. whole thing based <laughs> off of it's like, no, nah, you 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 have these failures along the way, these moments along the way, but you're building into something greater. Michael Jordan didn't win every year. LeBron didn't win it every year. So every uh, year they didn't win a championship. That wasn't a failure. Yeah. Like in some ways, shit, bro. Like if it was your goal to win a championship, you didn't win a championship, bro. That was a failure. But I can see you saying the entire season wasn't a failure yeah. because it's something we're going to learn from and use as a building block. But in a micro, bro, y'all were a favorite to win a championship. You wanted to win a championship. You got booted out of the first round as one of the best players in the world. And it wasn't even close. Y'all lost four to one versus like three, three, you know, or four to four to three. So, yeah, nigga, y'all failed. However, it's not the ultimate failure. That's what I think. You know, I know where he was trying to come from, but I can't. People done embedded this like you're not a loser mentality and everything else in the world. I can't let people get to my sports, bro. Like I love the ability to cleanly lose and win, man. It's cool. <laughs> we gotta have that culture somewhere. 
I saying. can't take these blurred lines. Bro, I can't. <laughs> <laughs> that should be bugging me, bro. Am I good? Am I not good? Am bro. I great? Am I not great? They be caring about <laughs> niggas' stats and shit. Like, bro, this nigga didn't win the championship, bro. Like, okay, well, everybody, you know, like, right, there's always an argument. Like, oh, he could. Nah, bro. We here to win. We not here to to, to get better stats in the other niggas. <laughs> but. Anyway, I digress. I imagine you found the data that you were looking for. No, nah, I was about to unfairly sell artists a lot, but my service is terrible here. So Who was the artist that you? I don't. I don't. I don't want to say it. No, nah, bro, <laughs> you, you gotta put it out there so then we can discuss how it might have been that you incorrectly <laughs> thought this artist fell off. Now I was gonna say because I just know I'm wrong, but I was gonna say Matt Ox and Block Boy JB, but mm. I know, but I just feel like, but like I said, once again, people listening, my phone does not currently have a service. We on Sean's basement. Oh, that, that's that's okay. No, oh yeah, your yeah, laptop right here. You right, got the man. laptop. Man. <laughs> uh, man, we 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 said Matt Ox. Yeah. So I want to see what your perception would be of Matt Ox falling off. Okay, eight fifty six. Oh, yeah. He has eight hundred fifty six thousand monthly listeners. So you would consider just if we going off of Spotify streams alone, because of course we talked about how the other parts of life yeah. you might not have fell off. Would you consider that a fall off? No, I wouldn't. Okay. But as I said, man, I was going to, I, I ain't want to throw them out there because I can't mm. look the numbers up. I feel like a black boy probably at least at 2 million. Oh, wait, that's the wrong page. Oh, I was like, damn, that's a hard nah. fall off. But. <laughs> <laughs> like, you don't even got a, a Spotify account no more. But how did I spell it wrong? Oh, you put a K. It's just two C's. That's what I thought I did. Oh, you got a K or two. Oh. But then the page right here. Oh, there you go. Oh, okay. Oh. It's only one. Okay. That's what it is. Oh, 3. Yeah, 3.2 million. So he hasn't fallen off either, clearly. Now, why you thought these niggas fell off, bro? Like, what, <laughs> what what lack of information have you received that might have allowed you to perceive that they could have fall off, fell off? See, what I was about to say is going to prove your point. But it, I'm just going to leave it because this is what I had at first. I was about to say, the only time I ever hear about Block Boy JB is usually around his personal opinion around things and not music. But then I know the argument could be like, well, if we care so much about his personal opinion on things, Kendrick made the argument that he hasn't fallen off because we don't care about the opinions of people that have that have fallen off, mm. which is a fair critique I hear from everybody, you know what I'm saying, that makes that. Um, and I was going to say the same thing for Matt Ox, but then what – was about to make me change my mind is there's a very reputable like publication YouTube channel that I follow that talks about like rising underground rappers and like people in like that world and they just did an interview with him the interview went really good you know what I'm saying like the feedback on it was great people was talking about so that that I can't even say you know what I'm saying he fell off because going back to your point his core audience that core demographic over there still cares about still care about him man so yeah I, I wouldn't have Thought of either of those two. Yeah, man. So now, I know we we had to use me as a live example for you know, <laughs> but it's perfect though. It's <laughs> like because we all are, so we might not use that word fall off because you might not be the person who wants to like throw that out there. But even like in your mind personally, you might think like, what happened to that person? I haven't seen them in a minute, and they could be you know I'm moving and shaking, doing just fine. Matt, I actually would have, weirdly enough, would have probably expected Matt thought that less about Matt than I would have about Block Boy JB. Mm -hmm. Okay, he was so he, he came up in a niche in the group. Right. Yeah. Exactly. Because yeah. he was already strong niche and a niche and, and you know had a specific group that wasn't necessarily commercial. Yeah. Street tends to like get kind of really fast. You're commercial and successful. Well at least commercial street, right? Yeah. And or you're not really winning at all. Yeah. So but it's crazy. Yeah, which I didn't, but I still didn't think Block Boy JB would fall off. But like that's a a harder one to sustain, in my opinion. Yeah, I mean he is living off hits too, but I forgot he got a good like. And that's the other thing too, bro, about living. the fall things. Like you can get a good string of hits before you do decline. You good. You yeah, set. You set. He, he is living, man. Yeah. That's all that matter, man. We we living good. Another day above ground. Yeah. Last time I saw that man, he's trying to convince us that the Xbox is better than the PlayStation. You know what I'm saying? I, I just I can't get with that. That was a thing for a minute though. There was a period of time where most people did think Xbox was better than PlayStation. Like, we're talking about maybe... Like the mid-2000s. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I was about to say, yeah. Like when, it was on, <laughs> I said, period of time. when Microsoft was on their whole Support America propaganda campaign, Bob <laughs> Game American, whatever the fuck, you know what I'm saying? Was, oh, man. So nah, bro, the Japanese got to figure it out, man. Like, when they come to these controllers <laughs> and, and this haptic feedback, man. I mean... <laughs> 
<laughs> oh man. Uh, well, look, I, 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 I pull it up uh, designer right here because I know a lot of people feel he fell off, but he's getting five point two million, well five point five million monthly for listeners. But people still care about his music. Now, again, even if music is like about your primary songs, your top song, is that something that we want to look into deeper when it comes into a fall off conversation? Like this is just us investigating and, and musing through where you could <laughs> finding a way that you can claim somebody fell off successfully. Well, this is this is a, this is it's a true haters conversation. Now. That's it's, what I was just about to say, bro. Like, it's like, hmm, how can I effectively <laughs> say that he is fell off? <laughs> well, if, if I was going to play devil's advocate, uh huh, I, I think I got away. So let me hear yeah, you I say. <laughs> if I was going to play devil's advocate, I would say their recent music isn't what. It's kept them in the top. All the Block Boy JB's biggest hits was from like four or five years ago. Uh-huh. And then who just showed Designer? Designer, same thing. All his all the songs in his top that's holding that from like three or four years ago. And they're all massive songs. So it makes sense that two to three million people a month would still be listening to these songs. You know what I'm saying? Hey. So if I was going for the hating narrative, that's what I would say. You hey. know? It's like your recent stuff ain't really hitting like your old stuff. Yeah, man. That would be considered fall off. That that that's the greatest argument yeah, that, for that, saying I, a fall off. I think it's the argument most people will lean on. Hey, I don't see you a lot and your new music ain't hitting and we don't care about it as much. It's really a we don't care though yeah. because there'll be plenty of people who they might not get that perception. The music could be even better. That's true. That's the weird part about it. It's such a media attention uh, and, and crowd perception thing when it comes to art forms, period. And, mm. you know, I, that might suck for many artists to, to hear, but it's like, on the capturing value from a business standpoint it's all based on other people thinking it's good even though this core of art is not supposed to be about other people thinking it's good necessarily yeah that's what I said that's what's so crazy about it bro like people can literally change the value of your art in the in the, the drop of a yeah, dime bro a like like we like we see it with viral moments and you know and um council campaigns bro just your entire value can be changed like this you know what I'm saying just like that shit bro. is crazy shit is crazy but, you know, even Drake once said, you know, they tried to tell me I fell off. Ooh, I needed that. You know what I'm saying? So, <laughs> uh, so, so use that language as, you know, if you're listening to this Black Boy JV, Matt Ox, Malcolm Moore, because I fuck with all three of them personally. I was mm-hmm. listening to Black Boy JV the other day. You know what I'm saying? Use it as motivation. Yeah. <laughs> Ooh, I needed that. That shit's still so funny. They're trying to as tell me part. I fell off. Ooh, I needed that. That's a, that's oh, I know he's like, I had someone tell me I fell off. Ooh, I needed that. Yeah, yeah okay. Yeah. This is a funny ass bar to me. It's, it's very dry. This is a man who's been on the boat. Like, smell like, man, you know, I fought with you, bro, but you kind of fell off. Like, oh, thank you. I needed that. It's the spark I needed to. Hey, I'm looking for motivation. <laughs> the ooh. It's, just, it's the ooh, I think. Going back to the studio right now. That bar. Um, <laughs> being a brand owner today feels like being a SoundCloud rapper in 2016. Mm. Everybody's starting a clothing brand. That's a bar. Everybody's starting a clothing brand, and they don't want to do the work to make it a valuable clothing brand, to make it an interesting clothing brand. And this is not a conversation I'm presenting. It's, shout out to Undiscovered.ig. Now they like cover a lot of brands like that's their thing the music fa- the, not the music space the fashion space right mm-hmm. so i can see them feeling that way because you're like dang i just see all these other people creating brands and yeah. like this is our space just like artists feel like yo i see all these influencers and people making music yeah. and they don't really like put in the work to make it quality music you're like oh yeah y'all just starting clothing brands because it sounds cool or whatever but here's but to me one a lot of artists were just starting merch, right? And there were very few who were starting like legit clothing brands. Now there's probably, I see a lot of artists really still having merch and they're calling it a clothing brand, but it's just merch. Yeah, it's a popular thing. It could, yeah, exactly. It's popular, it sounds more entrepreneurial to own something, right? It's like having my CEO on my business card, even though I don't got no business, Yeah. right? It's the same type of shit. So I feel it. Yeah, I, I mean, I really didn't. The SoundCloud rapper comparison, I don't necessarily fuck with, because I didn't really ever see a time where I don't know it was like cool to be a SoundCloud rapper. What? No, nah, I didn't. Well, twenty 
15 to 17 or 16 to <laughs> early 18, bro. That's different, though. Like, what? because what I mean by that is... All the rave. There were a lot of rappers on SoundCloud, and there was the media, like, on the outside branding it that way. But it wasn't like niggas being like, yo, I'm about to become a SoundCloud rapper. You know what I'm saying? Like, hey, I'm starting a brand is a cool thing. Not, hey, I'm about to be a SoundCloud rapper. Well, I, see, the argument I would make is for that time period, the term was, I'm about to start a collective. Collective was the cool thing to start in music at that time. Yes. <laughs> see, that's what I'm saying. That's a better, term. That's a better co- um, connection than being a SoundCloud rapper. Yeah. But, hey, they wanted to use Playboy Cardi's face and get a little cloud and, and post all of it. I respect it. The, the idea... In fact, though, is true. There's a lot of people starting to brands and start wanting to be CEO of their business and all these things, all right, without necessarily understanding what that comes with. I want yeah. ownership of everything. I want to have this type of brand. I want to be a producer and, <laughs> and say I, I do all of that and I mix without actually becoming good at it. All this stuff is cool. End of the day, bro, run your damn race, man. Like, look, everybody's not the full damn Megazord. Somehow, somebody else got to be the <laughs> arm, the leg, or whatever. Find your bag, stay in that bag. And there's plenty of people like making plenty of money in better positions of control. You know what I mean? Than a lot of these people who own 100% of everything. You got people who are second, third, fifth at some of these startups. You know what I'm saying? Like not a CEO, not a, a exec, not a board member, and they got hella money and they living a better lifestyle than some of these people who, like, ah, I gotta own everything and I want credit for everything. Da, da, da. So it's like, what what do you want? If it's an ego thing and you like, yeah, I need this, so people like, I want to feel like I'm respected or I control everything. Cool, because that's your quality of life, right? Some people can't. I can't just live great, bro. I need niggas to know that I'm great. <laughs> if that's your thing, bro, then that's your thing, right? Or I can't be successful on a team. I don't care that I'll be five times richer on this team. Like, nigga, I want to know that I did every little bit of it DIY, and that's going to make me feel better because I'm too insecure to have success that also involves other people. Nigga, do that shit. <laughs> like, that's your own thing. That's your prerogative. However, it is possible if we're just thinking about getting to a goal to get to these like to start a brand or and and have somebody else run that brand completely or to not start a brand, just do your merch and cap, cap somewhere else. That's just the only thing that I think about. But like, I guess I got a little bit off of, uh, from their take a little bit. So I'll, I'll let you choose whatever <laughs> the fuck I said, like as a point to respond to. I know I, I threw like, a lot out there. I don't, even, I don't even know how to follow up to that, man. You know, I'm, I'm trying to, it was so many different points. I'm trying to, trying to bring them all back in. I mean, I don't know. Like, like I was saying, I, I, I get where he's coming from. Like, like with the SoundCloud route thing, right? It was like at that yeah. time, it was cool and it was cheap mm. to hop in and say you were a SoundCloud rap. To the point about the clothing brand, it's, it's easier today to make a clothing brand than any time, right? You can That's find right. you a designer on Fiverr for fifty bucks. You go to Alibaba, you can have this shit printed and 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 designed before you even spend a dime of money. You know what I'm saying? So I get it. You know what I'm saying? I get it with a, the the thing is coming from and plus you know bro like when you're like younger coming up like doing having a creative job is like what's cool right you know that whole like 18 is like 27 window bro if you're not you don't have a creative job you're lame you know what i'm saying especially if you uh, especially if you're in a place like no nah, no nah, i'm not saying that you know what i'm saying but that's the i think that's the perception right especially if you're in someone like in atlanta or new york or miami or la bro if you're not doing something creative at, at, at a point you feel you feel off you know what I'm saying? Yeah. You feel out of place. Not one of the cool kids. Yeah. So it's like, you know, there are a lot of creative endeavors that take a lot of talent. And because of that, they take a lot of time to get good at. And unfortunately, there are some that aren't like that. And I think that SoundCloud rap and clothing brands in 2023 are two of those. You don't have to be an amazing clothing designer to start a clothing brand that you can have like one or two good t-shirt ideas and be and have a and start and i've seen it like i've seen brands kick off their whole brand off of yeah, one yeah. or two good t-shirt ideas right because that's the time that we live in right it's the same. equivalent of having a one hit exactly right? i was just about to say yeah. Same, yeah. same as like a rapper you know you can drop 20 shitty songs of number 19 go shit you up you got a brand you in the game right so i'm, yeah. I'm sure that you know, to that point, there are a lot of marketing things and just even mentality shifts that happen probably from clothing brands watching the way music and, and entertainers move. Right? Like, we could do the same shit, especially once we got closer to modern times and the brands 
of these clothing designers start to become more influential. Like, right, you're, we're paying attention to the Virgil Abloh's and the Jerry Lorenzo's and the Dapper Dan's and shit, right? So that's a part of it. Who we make the influencers influences the yeah, culture. The whole whatever, thing, yeah. yeah, what everybody else tries to start. And we have made clothing designers more popping than they used to be among the specific culture that we know. Yeah. That like we're talking about, like the more street, hip hop, popular space. Those people are way more cool and at the forefront than it was back in the day. Yeah. And you got to think too, bro. We're also the generation that grew up on H&M, Urban Outfitters, Shein, you know what I'm saying? Fashion over like these fast fashion clothing brands, right? They became yeah. popular for us. So, yeah. I mean, if you watch a company like I like I watch Fashion Nova build from the ground up, you know what I'm saying? Just a years later, learn about their whole supply process and where they get their clothes from and shit like that. And so it's like when you learn like, man, like there's these entities that aren't putting like a crazy amount of labor into getting better at the creative aspect, but they're building the business and selling these items to these people. I get it. I completely understand. Like I said, if I'm just looking at like, man, I can just make a, I can go download Weebly right now and make a little one page. Shit, fuck you, fuck. I can go download Shopify, <laughs> make a little one page site. I can get my materials sourced from China through Alibaba. Not even just the materials, the whole product, the shirt, the hoodie, the hat design. That's a fact. And I just set this shit up, post some cool pictures on Instagram, run some ads, and I can start making money. Not saying that's how easy it is, but that's the way that a lot of, the fast fashion designers from the last three to five years have made it look, you know what I'm saying? So if you're thinking about people growing up watching that, I get it. It's the same, it was the same thing with the SoundCloud epidemic, right? All we kept seeing motherfuckers like X and Lil Pump and shit blow up and we're looking like, man, they're shooting low quality videos and recording their music and a mic in their closet and putting us like, I mean, they're doing it for cheap and easy. I could do it. It's the exact, it's the exact same shit. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So I get it, you know, I get it. Yeah. Speaking of, uh, you know, every Negro on the sun starting a, a brand. <laughs> These two Negroes right here are going to be dropping merch very soon. We're going to officially talk about it next episode, though, because we had to end of this one. <laughs> I'm Brand Man, Sean. I'm Corey. And we out. Peace.